right. Good morning. I was a little bit weak, but not too terribly bad. Let's try Good morning. All kinds of things going on and all kinds of new things happening. Calvary is open as you are ready. Uh, most of you are aware of that. Many of you are here, so good to see you. Normal hours uh, in the business office are reestablished. And today, for the first time in a long time, our church nursery is open. Our nursery workers are there. Children's church is open. So uh, this is for both Sunday school and church. Um, we're excited about that. And we'll tell you about some other things that are happening shortly. Jim Reeves is leading the singing. He's shown this over here on the piano. Brother Denise, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking about him. I guess we could go back to calling you Dennis, huh? Brother Dennis, Sister Denise is leading the announcements. Curtis, Derek, and Boyd is a new guy back in the sound booth. We're glad to have him in training back there. Riley Guinness somewhere is going to be here for Children's Church. And then James Wilkinson, so glad to see him again uh, in Scripture and prayer. Text, call, remind folks if you're out there in Internet land, uh, let folks know that we are live on Facebook. Uh, facebook.com calvary brenham then uh, lord's supper is today so those of you who are watching from home if uh, you hadn't thought about this in advance if you could just kind of be thinking about what you would like to use as the elements we are not legalistic that you have to use welch's grape juice and a particular cracker or something you can improvise at home it's about your heart it's not about the uh, legality of the technicality of whatever the medium is so if you want to share uh, Lord's Supper with us at home, uh, we are making provision for that. And everything can be found at calvarybrenham.org. So without further ado, let's stand and sing Power in the Blood. Good morning, church. Do you believe there's power in the blood? If you do, put your hand up. For those of you that don't, you have my permission not to sing along with us. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Victory win. There's wonderful power in the blood. Let's hear you now. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing in Calvary's high. There's, there's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. Power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be wider, much wider than sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Sin saints are lost in the life-giving flow. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working of the land there is power power wonder working power in the precious blood of the land would you be service to jesus your king there's power in the blood power in the blood would you live daily his presence you see there's wonderful power in the blood do you believe it Power, power, a wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, a wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Pray with me, if you will. Father, if we could only remember, if we could only trust about the amazing power through the blood 
of the Son of God. Lord, we ask that some of that power be bestowed on our nation today as we deal with crisis on our right and on our left. May we stay true to the conviction that we have that you are in charge. Lord, thank you for each person that's here today. For everyone that's on the internet with us today, we ask a blessing. And we pray that our worship service today would be pleasing in your sight, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Turn to number 329. Let's talk about the grace. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that sees our sin and our guilt on your own Calvary's mouth, how cold there where the blood of the Lamb was filled. Grace, grace, God. kinds of announcements, Denise. <laughs> That's all right. It happens. Please make note of the following announcements. If you're watching from home, please make sure you share our live stream on Facebook and comment. Also, we can see those after the service. Pastor and Men continues Tuesdays at 10 a.m. And we've been having a good group and good we discussion. Have. And Dr. Bruce has been with us by live Sky. feed satellite technology stuff. Young at Heart will resume the first week in July that if as a reminder, is on the first and third Tuesdays of the month. We had a hard time remembering that because it's been it's so been long. It's been so long. Um, Wednesday night, meal is back at 5.30. And this week is spaghetti. Buschetti. Buschetti. B- <laughs> <laughs> Bible study will follow the meal at 6 o'clock. And then we will also live stream the first 20 to 30 minutes. So as well as today, please say hello if you are watching from home. Children's this Church is great news. and nursery is open. It is so great to have the kids back and then kind of be back to normal a little bit. So spread the word. If you know people who've been holding off coming in because we didn't have baby nursery open, it is open for Sunday school and church. And uh, they're excited about being back. I talked to them this morning. Vacation Bible School. 
We prayed about it. We talked about it. <laughs> we tried to figure it out. Too many variables. There's too many things in play. So we have decided to do a back-to-school splash party August 2nd following the service. So we have ordered a bouncy house slash water slide. We have hot dogs. We have a cotton candy machine coming. We have a snow cone machine and a popcorn machine. So we will just have one big party after church that day. So we'll remind everybody, but they can bring clothes to change into or there's time to run home and come back. We'll have hot dogs. So it's not like you have to go hunt down lunch or something. We'll just have a good day out there in the hot sun, yes. getting wet and sweaty and all have fun. <laughs> There's not, there's not a pastor's dunking booth. I'm Actually, sorry. Actually, David did suggest that we have one, just so you know. <laughs> David, you and I can talk after the service, buddy. <laughs> Next Sunday is Father's Day, so be thinking about that. But they don't want to tie. They don't want to tie. <laughs> do, do any men here want to tie for Father's Day? Anybody? Because I don't want to lie. I mean, if there's... James does. You want to tie for Father's Day? All right, everybody get James a tie. <laughs> For Father's Day. And then adult Bible school, 9.30, we are doing our adult fellowship Sunday time school. again. That's what I said. You said Bible school. Oh, adult you Sunday school. You know what's school. fun? You can always go to the video and watch, <laughs> see who's right. <laughs> That's right. Let me, let me say just a thing about this. Uh, adult Sunday school, we're back to having the snacky fellowship at 9.30, and then uh, Sunday school at 9.45. We tried something different this time. We tried Zoom. Did you see how that Zoom? Watch that again. Awesome. I think that's, that's Zoom. Cool. <laughs> We've been using Skype, and that hasn't worked out. The, the picture freezes, and for some reason, Dr. Bruce suggested we use Zoom, so we did that, and uh, that worked out really well. So we'll do that also on Wednesday night, maybe. We're kind of looking at that. Because another thing that this does is it could make people who are home actually be there you know, in the Zoom meeting. So we're exploring those things. We're learning a lot in this time of adjustment. And then class of 2020, we do have scholarship opportunities available. Uh, please see the church office for the requirements and the applications. And then please make sure to check our website, calvaryburnham.org, for any news and updates, including news on VBS or car clinic or any of the other activities that we have. Lead me to Calvary. Let's stand. If you're wanting to uh, get a scholarship, lead to Calvary. King of my life, thy crown me now, thine shall the glory be. Lest I forget my thorn crown, crown.
You may be seated, children. Come on, Ed. My goodness, hundreds of thousands of children, ministerially speaking, making their way forward. Riley, Joe, are you going to sit there the whole time? Okay. All right. How are you? Good to see you. How are you? Good? Good? Everybody's good? This is our good check. All who are good, raise your hand. All right, they do have my treasure box, and every week I've got something in my treasure box, <laughs> and I advanced it, and uh, I'm having a battle with the sound crew again. In my treasure box, I do have something. Anybody know what I have in my treasure box? Anybody take a guess? Anybody take a guess? Yes? Nothing. Nothing. Yes, ma'am? A cup. a cup. There is indeed a cup in my treasure box, and this cup happens to be a little cup, a communion cup, just like are out there. And by the way, this gives me an opportunity to say, because of all the social distancing and everything, we're doing things different this morning. We're not passing out the plates. We have several places. This is unusual. Uh, Betty worked hard to adapt to this, and she did a great job. Um, when we distribute the elements, we're not going to have them passed out by plates, and you're going to go get your own. And there's a cup with a piece of bread in it, and there's a cup with grape juice in it. We'll give instructions. But do you know why that's little like that? you know why that's little? Because this is not meant to be a drink. This is not meant to be snacks. This is not cookies and juice. This is just a sample of what represents the blood of Jesus Christ. So we take the bread, and that represents his body. He died on the cross for us. And then we take the cup. And this is for people who know Jesus as their Savior and are ready to approach the Lord's Supper with a clean heart, even if that means at invitation time, always before I do Lord's Supper, we do invitation time, where we have an opportunity to ask forgiveness for our sins, to make it right with somebody else if we've got a problem or they've got a problem. That's the time for that. So it's not snacky time. It's children, if, only if your mom and dad allow this because they understand where you are in your spiritual walk. And I believe it's time to go to Children's Church. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for this time together. Thank you for these boys and girls. Thank you for Miss Riley Jo. Be with her as she takes these children to Children's Church. Thank you for our nursery workers being back. And I just pray that you guide and direct them as they minister to these children whom you love. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls. We have several visitors this morning, and we're so glad that you're here. We normally have a visitor's form that we pass out. We have not had that during the time of the shutdown because we've had people coming from other churches while their church was not open yet, and we'll start that again next Sunday, handing out visitor forms. So don't think we don't love you or don't care about you. Uh, we would love for you to come back. We're glad that you're here. Uh, glad to see Kim. Haven't seen Kim in a long time. Betty, it's been 14 years since Betty's been with us. Not quite that long. Just seems like a long time. So uh, we're so glad to have everybody here this morning and those who are watching uh, on the internet. Let us sing, break thou the bread of life in preparation for our Lord's Supper time. Hymn 263. And I'd ask that you stand as we, if you're able, if you're not able to, stay where you are. Sacred 
Good morning, everyone. Today's reading will be from Titus 3. We're going to read verses three, or, uh, 4 through 7. But when the goodness and loving kindness of our God, our Savior, appeared, He saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to His own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and the renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. God bless the reading of his word as we go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity that you have given us to come together and read your word. We ask that you open both our hearts and minds today to the message that Pastor Billy will be giving us. And we ask that you be with us all as you guide us through our daily lives. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As we come to the time for tithes and offerings, you'll notice that there are offering plates in the pews. There are a number of ways to give. Online giving on our website. Make a check payable to us with the contact information on our website. There's a mailbox outside, locking, that you can drop something off if you'd like to during the week. And then, as I mentioned, collection plates in the aisles. So uh, remember that giving is a part of worship. We don't give because the church needs the money. We give because God has blessed us, and we have a need to give to return a small portion of that which the Lord has blessed us with. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for your love. Thank you for the privilege that we have of being in your house. Thank you, Father, that you own the cattle on a thousand hills, the wealth in every mine. I pray, Father, that as you have blessed us, let us continue to show that as we bless you. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. We pray and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're able, let's go ahead and stand together and sing this chorus.
Amen. Be seated, please. I am never quite ready for that song to be over. Love it. Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3, remind them, remind us. We're continuing in the pastorals. As a matter of fact, we're finishing up today. The pastoral letters are 1 and 2 Timothy and Titus. These are not just for pastors. Paul was in prison. I say this every time because this is true. Even to that last part about last minute instructions to his son in the faith, that was true when we were reading the letters to Timothy, uh, 1 and 2 and it is also true as we found that Titus is also somebody to whom Paul refers my son in the faith. Titus chapter 3, uh, Paul is wrapping up this letter to Titus. There is the remember, remind them, and remind them. I think I'm fading out. Is it because my battery's dead or what? There's remind them in the present tense, uh, the Greek present tense, which means don't just remind them one time, but remind them and keep on reminding them and remind them again. And if they forget, remind them again. And then keep on reminding. So remind them that they need to live obedient and kind lives. Now remember, this is to Titus on the Isle of Crete. And Crete is a bunch of ruffians and liars and mean people and uh, Paul had told you need to speak really sternly to them. It's going to take some stern talking to them. So in contrast to that, live obedient and kind lives, and then speak evil of no one, part of the being kind, what we once were. There's that past tense that Paul will be talking about here. And then he continues to talk about the great salvation of God, something so very important. So without further ado, chapter 3, verse 1, remind them to be submissive to the rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good work. Boy, as we watch our world around us today, we are seeing there is this problem with authority. There's this problem with this fighting back, the, 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 uh, the chaos, the uh, even areas where they're declaring that they don't want any police at all. It'll be interesting to see how that works out for them when there's a crisis and they need help. There are authorities who are over us to the rulers and authorities. And I want to quickly point out that God never commands us, the Bible never tells us to obey those over us who tell us to sin or cause us to sin. The, the rules and the, and the authority that they have over us might make us uncomfortable. It, it might make things not so fun but we are never commanded to obey rulers who tell us to sin. As a matter of fact, we see the apostles in the book of Acts uh, pose that question, shall we obey God rather than men or men rather than God? I think the answer is pretty clear, to be obedient to every good work. Now, work is, Paul talks about this a lot, and uh, people get into kind of discussions between James and, and, and Paul, um, that, that there's faith and works, and, and they're, dis they're not disagreeing at all. We are saved, so we work. Because we're saved, we, we don't work so that we can be saved, but because we're saved, we are saved for every good work. Works do not save us. Because we are saved, we work. We are unto good works. From the foundation of the world, the Bible tells us. This is why we are here. We are saved to do good works, not just to sit around and bask in the glory. Oh, isn't it wonderful singing and praising God? And we are saved to good works. To speak evil of no one. And there's actually an interesting word there. Uh, that's a Greek word, or it comes from a Greek word that literally means blaspheme. Do not blaspheme. Now, we think of blasphemy in terms of God or the Holy Spirit. That's kind of the ultimate pushing it to the limit when we blaspheme the Holy Spirit. But blasphemy just means to attack somebody without good cause just for the sake of being mean or ugly or whatever you want to call it. To avoid quarreling, to be gentle, to show perfect courtesy toward all people. Man, there's a lot going on there, isn't there? If we think about 
lives and, and are we like this all the time to speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle. And, and gentle there is kind of coupled with that concept of meekness. It's not that we're weak or it's not that we're sissies or it's that we have the power to wreak havoc, but we choose not to. We're going to control that because Paul talked a whole bunch about self-control both to Timothy and to Titus to be gentle and to show perfect courtesy toward the people that we love. That's not what it says. See a couple people say, no, not towards the people that we love, towards all people. This is how we should act towards all people. So this is not just about manners. Even lost people can have good manners. Even lost people can be kind to one another. Because we value people. We value our brothers and sisters in Christ because we love them. We are of kindred spirit. We value the people who are lost because we want them to know Jesus. So we want to be the good examples to them. Uh, people who are given the mercy of God, which we'll see a whole bunch here in just a bit. We have been given mercy. So we should mete out that mercy. We should consider how God loved for us. He gave His Son for us. Jesus died for us on Calvary's cross. And then because Christ is in us, and Christ in us is indeed the hope of Verse 3, For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient. Look at that, were once. Paul is assuming a big assumption here. This is how we used to be. That was then. This is now. When we talk about baptism, when I baptize somebody, I, I make a point to say this is the old nature that's buried and the new person comes up. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Buried in your sins, raised again in newness of life in Jesus Christ our Lord, where we were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others and hating one another. This is how we used to be. And we're not like that anymore. As we look to the Lord's Supper, we get to that part where it says, but let a man examine himself. So this is a good examination question. Am I different knowing Jesus than I was before I knew Jesus? Now, I'll, I'll hasten to add that, that I've known some people who were downright decent people before they got saved. And it wasn't this great big glaring change. They, they just got sweeter, but they're still good people. And then I've known people who lived kind of a... <laughs> not on purpose. Very colorful lives, shall we say. And uh, then they get saved, and there's a drastic... Change. Unfortunately, what happens all too often is somebody will talk about, oh yeah, there, I used to cuss and you know rob banks and chew and you know they they go through all those things. And then I got saved, and then they stop. That's not where it stops. That's where it begins. After all of that is put away and Jesus Christ comes into our life, there should be a testimony that moves forward from that point. Remembering God's work builds four things I want to cover just real quickly this morning. Gratitude for what He has done. It's not me that changed my life. It's God that changed my life. And because I'm grateful for what He did in me, I want for Him to do that in the lives of people that I know who are in turmoil. It puts the humility in us if we recognize the fact that this is not something that I did. This is but for the mercy of God, but by the grace of God. It's all about what God did in my life, and He changed me. He changed us. And then understanding that others can change, remembering God's work and what He did for us, we could look, for example, the ones at uh, Crete. I think what Paul was saying is, Titus, these are horrible people. But the same way that He changed us, He can change them. 
because when we remember what God has done in us, and we see people acting the fool, and we see people doing crazy things, and we see people living lives in rebellion against God, first of all, recognize why they're doing that. They're doing that because they're serving Satan. But also recognize that they stop doing that when they begin to serve Jesus. He changed me. He can change them. Then the next thing is that faith can change them too. It, it, it's just one of these kinds of things that we have to remember that we don't have to give up on somebody. We can keep praying for them. We can keep hoping for them. We can keep being a good witness to them, knowing that they're always looking for that one slip up. Again, way back when I worked at Ford Motor Company, there were guys who, anytime somebody came in professing to be a Christian, they're immediately going to start messing with them. They're going to push buttons. They're going to yank. They're going to, they're going to do everything they can to either make you lose your temper, make you scare, make you do something. Then they can laugh and say, see that? You're just like the rest of us. We need to live a consistent Christian life before people knowing that they're going to look for any fault in us, but we just continue to serve the Lord and to live our Christian lives in front of them. Verse 4, But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, this is so good, Paul is telling Titus, remind them about the goodness and kindness that they should be exhibiting. And it's because God showed us His loving kindness and goodness let's look at what god put in our lives and model that for other people paul never ever ever suggests that we rescue ourselves it is god who does the work we accept his work we accept christ's completed work on the cross we accept what jesus did to rescue us romans chapter 6 and romans chapter 8 goes into that beautifully Nothing saves us apart from God's redemptive plan. Giving money to the church doesn't save us. Attending church doesn't save us. Being good to people doesn't save us. Even being exceptionally nice to the pastor, I don't know why I was looking at you, doesn't save us. There is nothing that saves us except the blood of Jesus Christ, His sacrifice on the cross, His paying our debt. Nothing saves us from the part, apart from the redemptive work of Christ. Verse 5, He saved us. No, notice all of the emphasis is on what God did. He saved us, not because of works done by us. He saved us, but according to His own mercy. By the washing and regenerating, uh, regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. Not us, Him, the Son, the Holy Spirit, it's all about Jesus, it's all about what's going on from Him, who He poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by His grace, notice all the emphasis there is on what He has done and what He has provided and how He is working in our lives. By His grace, we might become heirs. And that's an important thing there, we might become heirs because in a little bit we're going to partake of the Lord's Supper table and in the aisles, different than we've done before. But nonetheless, we recognize it for what it is. When Jesus said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, the will of the Father, and when Jesus dies, we get to inherit all that He purchased for us. By dying on the cross, we become joint heirs, with Jesus Christ, according to the hope of eternal life. Verse 8, this is a trustworthy saying, and I want you to insist on these things, talking to Titus about, remind them, and then remind them again, and remind them again, this is a trustworthy saying, and I want you to insist on these things, so that those who have believed in God may be careful to devote themselves to good works. Paul is talking over and over about good works, and this, this comes after all that God has done for us. Nothing that we can do, for by grace are we saved through faith. It's not of our works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, shortified. 
these things are excellent and profitable for people. Good works. We talked Wednesday night about the works. There's that thing about don't uh, blow the trumpet when you give alms and uh, uh, don't uh, stand at the tower and pray so that everybody can hear you and say things like, uh, man, I'm, I'm so blessed to, to be not like this guy over here. God loves me so much more than him. Nothing like that. Uh, don't give your alms as a show and let the left hand not know what the right hand. That, in contrast to the principle that says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your what? Good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And somebody says, boy, that's a conflict there, isn't it? No, because in that first section where it says, don't do all of these things, Jesus is making it very clear that these are hypocrites. They're doing that for the appraisal, doing that for, uh, for men to praise them. That's the problem there. When we're doing good works so that people may see our good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven, that's the good thing. And Paul is constantly talking about the works that we should do, that we unto good works, that we're called to good works, that God may be careful to devote themselves to good works. These things are excellent and profitable for people, but avoid foolish controversies, genealogies, dissensions, and quarrels about the law. Don't just get bogged in stuff that's taken up time and not productive. Don't waste your time just arguing for the sake of arguing. There are some people who love to do that. Verse 10, as for a person who stirs up division, after warning him once and then twice, have nothing more to do with him. Remember, Paul is specifically talking to Timothy, who is serving, uh, excuse me, Titus, serving in Crete, and there are some really tough dudes there. And, and he's saying, be, be kind, be loving, reach out to them, but don't get so bogged down that all you do is endlessly argue with them. And I can just see all in his mind, thinking about the instructions of Jesus in Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 through 17, where Jesus explains, if you got a problem, you go to that person one-on-one. -on -one. If that doesn't work, you take somebody with you. If that doesn't work, you call. There's a church discipline there. You, you don't just endlessly put up with nonsense. At some point, you have to say, you know what? You really can't be here. We, we love each other, we, we're, we're reaching out to people, we accept lost people, we're going to be kind and loving to lost people, but if all you're here to do is to stir up trouble, you need to be someplace else. I know that's harsh, and, and people say, well, that doesn't sound very loving. There is tough love. There's a point at which you say, that, I'm not saying what Paul said, at least on one occasion, just pitch him over to the devil. I mean, that's pretty harsh, isn't it? There comes a point at which you say, when there's somebody who's all they're doing is stirring up trouble, you say, you know what? We don't allow that here. And a church has to be conditioned to understand that when there's a troublemaker that comes into the midst, the church needs to be united and unified. And uh, we're going to do everything we can to love you and, and to accept you. But if you're only here to stir up trouble, you need to be someplace else. After you've warned them once and twice, have nothing more to do with them. Knowing that such a person is warped and sinful, he is self-condemned. You didn't condemn him, he did that by himself. All you're doing is recognizing that particularly as pastor, shepherd of the flock, it's my job to keep those bad guys out of here and to minister to the flock. It would be the same as David with his sling and there comes a lion or a, a bear or something else to come in and invade the sheep. He's not going to say, hey, come on, as long as you're nice, you can stay here. He's going to run them off. And then some real quick notes. We want to get to our Lord's Supper here in just a second. When I sent Artemis or Tychicus to you, do your best. Some people think that those are the ones who brought the letter and will carry it on uh, to come to me at Nicopolis where I have decided to spend the winter there. It, it's just great that Paul being the great apostle that he is, the great theologian, he always takes time to recognize people and call them by name. He, he's, he's always acknowledging somebody who was kind to him or somebody who needs help or somebody that they're praying for. He's ever mindfully praying for people. 
do your best to speed Zenos the lawyer and Apollos on their way. Uh, excuse me, these are the ones that people think might have been the ones carrying the letter. Uh, so that they lack nothing, make sure that they've got, you know, whatever it needs for their journey, take care of them. And then verse 14, and let our people learn to devote themselves. My goodness, here it is again. You know, when the Bible says something one time, you can take it to the bank. But when it says it another time and another time and another time and another time, do you think maybe God is trying to say something? And Paul is making it clear. Let our people learn to devote themselves to good works so that they can be saved. No, because they are saved, let them devote themselves to good works so as to help cases of urgent need and not be unfruitful. God did not just save us to seat us. He saved us so we can serve. Verse 15. All who are with me send greetings to you. Greet those who love us in the faith. Spread the word. Tell them that Paul said hi and those with me said hi. And then he closes this letter with grace be with you all. Grace is a recurring theme by Paul over and over and over we see Paul talking about grace. Let's go back to that one verse. Oh, I must have skipped it there. I had one of my slides. I had going back to verse 7. Let's go ahead and see what that is because that was important. I wanted to go back to that. Chapter 3, verse 7. So that having been justified by grace, we may become heirs with the hope of eternal life. Heirs with Jesus. That's what this table is all about. We might become heirs with Christ. So as we come to the Lord's Supper table, as we always do, we come to the point of self-examination where, as I have said to some of our visitors, that you don't have to be a member of Calvary Baptist Church to partake of the Lord's Supper. You just need to know Jesus Christ as your Savior. And you need to approach this with the right heart, with the right spirit with the right attitude. It is all about Jesus. It is about what he did on Calvary's cross. Again, this is kind of different. We've got the elements in the aisle. So if you would, when we sing this next song, I, I think we've got a song coming up. When we sing that song, you can get both of them if you want to. You can get the bread and the cup and take them back. Some of you already picked them up before the service began. That's fine. We're totally understanding. But... Uh, are you ready to receive the Lord's Supper is there something in your heart that needs to change is there something you need to come and kneel here and ask forgiveness for is there something you need to talk to the pastor about is there somebody in the room that you need to go and ask forgiveness is there something you need to do in this time of self-examination as we sing when I survey the wondrous cross thank you pastor you know when we say when I survey in Ephesians 3.18, Paul says that you may comprehend the length, the breadth, and the height, and to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge. So as we sing, when I survey, would you survey the love of our Savior? This is a time of self-examination.
Would you be seated, please? Just before we do our Lord's Supper, Parker, would you come and stand with me, please? This is one of the... You, Mom, you can come stand with her, too. This is half of the P-Sisters. About a year ago, we started talking about she gave her life to Jesus and she wants to follow him in baptism, and she wasn't quite ready. So this week, we had another chat, and it was clear to me that she understands what this was all about. When I asked her what baptism is, one of the first words out of her mouth is, it's a symbol. And she went on to explain what is a symbol of. So we are going to be baptizing her next Sunday. And let's pray for her now. Father, we just thank you for Parker. Lift her up to you. Lord, give her the courage to stand before these people. Not be afraid or shy. We love her. We want the best for her. And Father, I just thank you for her decision to follow you in baptism and in life. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much. Does anybody not have the bread? There's still in the aisles. If you need to move and get it, you can do that. Anybody not have the bread? Everybody up here has. So let's ask the blessing on the bread. And King, would you please do that? Have the scripture up there, please. After when he had taken uh, the bread, he gave thanks and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Would you ask the blessing on the cup, please? A little while ago, we were talking about heirs with Christ. The blood that he shed purchased for us redemption his death on the cross this is a symbol of that after the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying this cup is the new testament in my blood this do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me father we thank you again for your love and for this time together a solemn time where we look to the price you paid on Calvary's cross, Jesus dying for us, Father God giving up your only Son. I pray, Father, that this not just be something that we do this time and forget about it, but even in the weeks to come, we think about the symbols that we use here to represent something so incomprehensible so great that you would love us so much that you would want us to live eternally with you at the price of your only son we praise you and give glory in jesus name amen let's stand and we're going to sing uh, one of my other favorites in christ alone we're going to sing all the verses
God is good. And all the time, God is good. God bless.